This is the uh, October 21st, 2024 meeting of the Wallingford Zoning Board of Appeals. I'd like to start the meeting by saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Tonight's decision will be published in the Record Journal on Friday, October 25th, 2024. The effective date of your variance will be Friday, October 25th, 2024. The date of certified copies recorded on the land records. The statutory 15-day appeal period will expire on Sunday, November 10th, 2024. If you commence operations and or construction during the appeal period, do so at your own risk. Uh, voting tonight, um, Sitting in right now is Bob Gross, but um, Bruce Conroy is going to be a little late. Tom Wolfer, Karen Raddatz, uh, Ray Rise, and myself, Joe Russell. Uh, if anybody's here to hear 24-031 um, for 386 William Road, that's going to be uh, forwarded to November meeting. Uh, first application is 24-026, a variance request from uh, Siddiqui, yes. 57 Simpson Avenue. Madam Secretary, do we have any correspondence? Uh, yes, we do, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we have staff comments that read as follows. Application 24-026 is technically an amendment to previously granted variance 24-012 approval on June 17, 2024, for the same front yard setback of 17 and a half feet, where 20 feet is required and 22 and a half feet exists to construct a covered front porch at 57 Simpson Avenue in an R11 district. This, this variance request is unchanged and project is the same. The plan submitted with the original variance request were for a 20 foot by 5 foot covered porch across the entire front width of the dwelling. The dwelling is actually 24 feet wide. Since the motion for approval was made based on submitted plans at the time and those plans had an incorrect dimension, the applicant seeks approval to amend the pro approved variance with corrected supporting building plans. The request, however, is unchanged. This office would also request a waiver and refund of the reapplication fee. This amendment to a previously granted variance is not necessarily required, yet the applicant seeks to ensure an accurate and correct approval. Thank you. Welcome. Please state your name and address for the record. Um, my name is Munir Siddiqui. My address is 57 Cincinnati, one Okay, explain what happened here. Uh, you're back visiting us again. Yeah, so basically my uh, construction guy, he made the uh, wrong meter. So my pool bill is 24 feet. Yeah. So he put like 20, uh, 22 something, right? Yeah. So, which is, uh, I want to make a you know, pool bill. Mm -hmm. That's why I just gave the number, reapply for the pool. Okay. And how much was it, what, how, how was the difference? For, it's uh, I'm not going forward like no, no, but I mean the width, 20, the width 24, and would you come for 22? Yes, 20, 20, 20, 20. 20. Yeah. yeah, okay. Anybody got any questions for the applicant? Anybody here to speak in favor of this application? Anybody here to speak against it? Hearing, seeing none, do you have anything further you'd like to I'm going to close the public hearing and open it up for discussion and action by the board. Just we're going to make two motions here: one to waive the application fee, and then one for the variance. I make a motion that we waive the application fee for 24 Second. Motion to approve the. This is for the. Waiver of the application fee. Mr. Conway. 
Mr. Wolf should okay. finish this one. Finish yes. Yes. Mr. Wolf. Yes to approve. <laughs> Mrs. Roberts. Yes to approve. Mr. Rice. Yes. And you know, Chairman Hussey. Yes. Mr. Chairman, make a motion on 24-26 variance request to the east front yard of 17.5 20 feet required to construct a 24-foot wide porch and then do variance approval for a 20-foot wide porch at 57 Simpson Avenue in an R11 district. So moved. Second. Motion to approve the variance request, Mr. Gross. Yes. Mr. Wolford. Yes to approve. Ms. Raddatz. Yes to approve. Mr. Rice. Yes to approve. And Chairman Rice. Yes. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We'll have you back later on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Next uh, variance request is 24-027, variance request for Gethers, uh, 26 Demi Road. Madam Secretary, do you have any correspondence? Yes, Mr. Chairman. We have staff comments that read as follows. Applicant seeks variance approval for a side yard of 19.1 feet where 20 feet is required and 35.1 feet exists to construct a two-story addition at 26 Demi Road in an R18 district. Lot is conforming through lot fronting on two streets with an unusual L shape with the majority of the parcel behind and to the northeast of the dwelling. Although the request is for less than one feet of required side yard setback, the board should consider whether reducing one dimension of the proposed addition by one foot and eliminate need for variance is the more viable or alternative. And that's it. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, before I get started, Bruce Conroy is um, here now, so he'll be sitting. In Sorry for being late. <laughs> Please state your name and address for the uh, right. Yes, my name is Terry Gathers, and I live at 26 Demi Road, Wallingford, Connecticut. Welcome. Please um, explain your application. What are you trying to do? Well, originally, um, I was looking to uh, put an addition on the house, um, but since then, some things have changed. Okay. Um, my mother-in-law has moved in with us, and right now she can't come stairs, so she's pretty much living in our family room and living room. So we're looking to extend that. And I needed that extra foot because I need to put some closets in there. So it makes a difference. Okay, so so you're saying your um, mother-in-law moved in with you and, and now because she can't do stairs, you're expanding to give her a bigger yes. first floor footprint. Yeah. Have you looked at Doing it, um, so this is going to be on the right side of your house? The right side. Yeah, Did you look at doing it on the left side? I can't do it yeah. on the left side. I got stairs there. And things like that. I know you're on the steep yeah. hill there. Yeah. 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 Okay. Anybody got any questions for the applicant? Yeah. I, I, how close are you going to? Those are big houses right on the road there. Yeah, it's going to be. Yeah, I think I mean, it's going to be parallel. The same. You're not coming house, anything. It's but, all going. But it's going, yeah, towards the, the right side. But you're going two stories. Correct. And one foot. How how much of a width is it going to be from the right side, from where you're building, knocking out the wall? Because you're knocking out a wall, I Correct. assume. Mm -hmm. And then to the farthest to the right, how far is the room going to be? How big is the room going to be? Uh, it's, uh, it's 16 feet. Wide. 16 foot, 28 wide. The house width is 28, and the distance out we're going is 16. You're built no, so the addition is going to be 16 feet wide, and how right. deep? And how much deep? Feet deep? Deep. Right. Right. Well, 28 yeah. wide and 16. So you're going 28 wide. Right. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty large room. No, for one foot. Well, it's going to well, it's going to be a bathroom and you know, a closet. I have to ask, if you don't well, mind, would you consider dropping it one foot and then we don't need a variance at all? I mean, it's so let me just give you my reasoning. It's if we give you a foot, then we might as well change the zoning of the foot. Do you understand what I mean? So that's why I would ask if you could just, you know, 
put make it make it so it complies with zoning and we don't there's no need for a hearing I, I hear you um, but it's also going to attribute to costs because now there has to be cuts you know to the 15 foot the house has to the architects going to have to redraw the, the uh, design also so it's going to Yeah, cost isn't a factor in zoning. That's it. That's all I got. Anybody else? So, is plan? the whole first floor going to be hers then? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, first floor, yeah. The whole first, so she'll have about fifteen hundred square feet then. Yeah. Maybe yeah. more. Is anybody here to speak in favor of this application? <coughs> anybody here to speak against? Hearing, seeing none. Do you have anything further you'd like to add before I close the public hearing? Uh, no, sir. I'm going to close the public hearing, open up for discussion and possible action. Oh, well, I ju it just the discussion. I want to make sure that we're not adding an accessory apartment without moving forward. So perhaps the, to condition the approval on if that's the intention that that the uh, space is not to be used as an apartment until the approval is and, is gained. And true, and it's. I mean, if it's just living space, fine. But if it's right, just separate, it's just I mean, she's eighty-six now. Mm -hmm. and, you know. Originally, you're it not, wasn't you're not done putting a kitchen or anything else. No, there. no. Yeah, okay. Just, that's just, just yeah, just that in the bathroom. Just to clarify. Yeah, yeah. The, okay. There is a difference. Not, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. I close the public hearing. Open up for discussion and possible action by the board. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve the variance request for a side yard of 19.1 feet, where 20 feet is required to construct a two-story addition. At 26 Demi Road is shown on the zoning location survey as built lot 9 Oak Hill number 26 Demi Road dated 11 11 03 and submitted plans received 9 10 24 and uh, subject to this is a living area only not kitchen or correct okay that enough so moved. Second. Motion to approve, Mr. Conroy. No to approve. Mr. Wolfer. Yes to approve. Ms. Raditz. Uh, yes to approve. Mr. Rice. Yes to approve. And Chairman Rusick. Yes. Your parents been granted. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next variance request is 24-028. Uh, variance request for board spell. For 121 Yes, we do, Mr. Oh, Chairman. Right. We have staff comments that read as follows. Application 24-028 is a variance request for front landscaping of 23.7 feet, where 50 feet is required and existing to expand parking area and add trailer storage area at 121 Dudley Avenue in an I-40 district. Lot is a one-acre parcel within and surrounded on three sides by 12.35 acres, which is 524 to 526 South Cherry Street and 109 and 197 Dudley Avenue, also part of BYK USA property. Applicant proposes 24 trailer parking spaces, 60 feet times eight feet, including sufficient area for trailer access, 23.7 feet from front boundary. Front setback for an I-40 zone is 50 feet. Surface modifications such as parking areas do not qualify as structures requiring variance approval for any setback requirement. Yet, 6.14 uh, C of the zoning regulations require the entire required front yard, 50 feet, to be landscaped. The surrounding BYK properties 
comply with landscaping requirements on Dudley Ave. Reduction in front landscaping requirement relates to 140 feet of the 175 feet total 121 Dudley Avenue Street frontage. Applicant will proceed to Planning and Zoning Commission following ZBA determination for site plan modification. Welcome. Please state your name and address for the record. Sure. Uh, Anton Borsfeld, uh, I'm an employee of FIX. So what we're trying to do, I, I got a couple um, layouts here. So this, this is just our overall site uh, here, right, the, the 16 acres. Um, this is actually a site that is 121 Dudley. Um, so I have that on back here. Um, so we actually have these, these spaces 13 through 24 uh, we've built exactly. previously. Um, and we're looking to expand our, our production growth has grown over the last year and a half uh, above what we had anticipated. Uh, and we're, we need to install an additional 12 um, parking spaces here in this uh, area. And, and so it's pushed so close to the road because otherwise you don't have enough space in the middle here to turn around with truck traffic. Um, when, when I look at what we've, so some of this area is uh, existing travel way that will be closing so we can build this parking area um, and between returning this area that is currently paved to grass and this other strip that was an access road into this area that we're closing to you know rearrange traffic on site i think we end up with about a net 600 feet of green space that we're adding um, by making some of these chains so kind of exchanging some of this area for, for this area for parking so um, flip back to the beginning. I'm sure. trying to understand where you're doing this. So on Dudley Avenue, you've got a building which is way down on the right. This one. Where is that on that? Uh, here. So, okay, so, so this parking is behind. Is the north. Oh, okay. Like right across from the um, car wash. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, yeah, so that's the building you guys purchased. Um, used to have a whole bunch of different, off, um, like there's a welder in there. There's a whole bunch of different stuff in there, and that that connects all the way over to Dudley Avenue, right? The so this is this is a structure here that we use for maintenance. Yeah. Um, I think this used to, and I I'm not sure when we purchased certain parcels. <coughs> yeah. Um, we we use this for maintenance. There used to be four different bays that may be some of the mm -hmm. shop piece. Um, this was an, was an area that. My understanding we've had for a while. We have this is a this is a structure here. Uh, our main production area is down on this mm -hmm. south end of. And in campus. between that and that is the office building that's set up. This is an, office, this is an yeah. office building. Yes, okay. sir. This is another warehouse here. Uh, this is a, a different laboratory office area with some internal parking on this, on the property. So that I think that property you're looking to do that used to be self storage, wasn't that? Is that still uh, it, there? It, uh, it's no longer there. Right. So um, that's probably that property. Yeah, I, I believe it is. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I'm just trying to figure out where you where where we are. Um, all right. So you're back to the greenery you're adding. Um. So our current fence line is the fence line just for you know keeping um, keeping our equipment safe is, is about here. We're gonna on a different aspect part of our property. It's much closer to the property line, um, and so the plan is to move that fence line out to match existing. Um, install um, arborvitaes along along there as a, as a privacy screen, uh, and then this this is addition. Um, sloped asphalt to uh, store a like a gas tank tanker trailer mm -hmm. um, either empty or full and then the reason it's all sloped like this for us is uh, in a very unlikely event of a tanker release this area remains closed to um, stormwater drainage at all times and we sample if there's obviously we'll catch rainwater uh, but that way any any potential spill out of a trailer would be contained in this area that we would clean it up um, within, within our existing procedures. So you, you said on, on the western side, you already have set up for trailers? Yes, sir. And how many trailers do you park? Uh, we parked 12 here. Is it 
used regularly or is that, I mean, do you regularly have 12 trailers yes. there? Yes. Okay. And, um, we have, a, a, yes, we have 12 trailers there now already. Okay. And you're going to add another? We're going to add another 12 here to support our, our trolling operations here. Anybody got any questions? I have one quick question. Where are they going to enter and exit from all these trailers? Um, along, a, along a path um, that we have. So we um, typically there's there is an access here um, from Dudley, but most of this traffic is coming to and from our operations area, um, and so we have an existing path along our property, um, obviously across the uh, Hebrew Cemetery property here, and then back onto our property to enter um, into our production work area. So it's going to increase the flow of trucks that are coming across there. Yes. Okay. But, but mainly just on your property, because oh, yeah, the trucks are already coming in and out. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So it's just the trucks on their property. Well, they, they cross transverse other properties. Just one. Yeah. Yeah, we have, we have an agreement with oh, the okay. yeah. so right. Just yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. All right. May I? Yeah, go ahead. I, uh, I, no, I understand what you want, but um, how is that, how, how does, how, how is there a hardship involved here? You guys are a variance, not an exception, so how is there a hardship? So I, I guess the, the hardship is the 50-foot setback, that, that green space, it makes it difficult to, um, makes it difficult to safely turn and park these trailers in this area. If, right, if this were to be pulled into that 50-foot setback, you don't have enough apron space to travel and bring those trucks into those parking spots. Um, and there's not really another, there's not another spot on site to put this kind of facility uh, on our, on our property. I'm not sure that's a hardship. <laughs> Is it? That's for you to determine. Well, well I, don't, I don't believe that's a hardship, and I would be hesitant. I mean, I'm only one vote, mind you, but I would be hesitant to uh, to give you this, and then I'd have to give it to the next person who asked too. This is real. This really should go to planning and zoning for a change. And we are going there as well after this. And that's where it should. That's where, in my opinion, it should be. Not here. Mr. Chair, Maybe, uh, yes, I want to clarify for the board uh, as well. We are, the variance is strictly to not landscape that required front yard. Nothing further. When they move along, which they will, for their site plan modification, the Planning and Zoning Commission has the authority to compensate mm -hmm. elsewhere on, on the property or on adjacent properties that they own for, for the landscaping. You're, you're just reducing that requirement in that one piece of their for compound the, of sites for this will. one for this one property owner not the rest well they're, they're surrounded by their own property too so yes. in the rest in the entire zone for the, for this property is surrounded i'm sorry i know i know exactly i know what yeah, you mean so but, just I, but, to I, be but, clear, I, but so. I, I just wanted to make clear that that's you know it's just they're not the only property owner that has to ha go by this requirement right correct all right that's what i want to make clear that's it. Anybody else? Is there anybody here to speak in favor of this application? <clears throat> anybody here to speak against? And seeing none, do anything further you'd like to um, And a close the public hearing and open for, up for discussion and possible action by the board. Uh, Mr. Chairman, make a motion for variance request for front landscaping area of 23.7 feet. Where 50 feet is required to construct a trailer parking area and storage, trailer storage at 121 Dudley Avenue as shown on zoning location plan. 121 Dudley Avenue, sheets ZZ 101 and 102, dated 9 5 uh, 2024, and submitted plans received on September 11, 2024. So moved. Second. Motion to approve. Mr. Conroy. No to approve. Mr. Wolfer. Yes to approve. Ms. Raditz. Uh, yes to approve. Mr. Rice. Yes to approve. And Chairman Russick. Yes. Hello. Thank you.
Right. Next variance request is 24-029, variance request for National Science Court Bureau of Darcy Roy, 905 North Colony Road. Madam Secretary, do we have any questions? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. We have staff comments that read as follows. Request is for total sign area of 73.86 square feet, where 54 square foot maximum is permitted and 48.92 square feet exists to construct a 24.94 square foot ground sign at 905 North Colony Road in an RF 40 district. Current sign regulations allow one ground sign not to exceed 64 square feet per parcel and total sign area, including any sign air, any ground sign for the parcel allowed is based on the linear measurement of the building. Allowances for this zone permit one square foot of signage for each linear foot of building frontage. The site design of the new business at this location is of a drive-through only with a 525 square foot building. Applicant removed the existing ground sign from the previous business in order to allow some permitted signage on the site. Applicant is entitled to far less signage than existed on site for the simple reason that the building is one quarter the previous size. Sign regulations are currently being updated and will include the right to claim any legally existing signage. To that end, this office can support the granting of this variance for the approximate 25 square foot of additional signage for a single ground sign. Ground sign sign is requested is less than the pre-existing signage on site and would be allowed as of right several months from now post the adoption of the amended mm -hmm. sign regulations. That's it. Thank you. Welcome. Please state your name and address for the record. And my name is Darcy Roy. I am at 7 Vernon Tree Lane in Wallingford. Okay. Please uh, explain your application. Okay. And as you know, we are here to request um, that you allow us to install an additional pylon sign, which will cause us to um, exceed the regulated amount that we're allowed. We currently have two wall signs on the building. We have one on the front of the building that's 28.272 square feet, and one on the side that's 20.65 square feet. That's on the south side of the, of the building. Um, so I spent a lot of time driving up and down Route 5. Um, this building is set back about 54 feet from the road. And when you are traveling north um, on <laughs> Route 5, you can, you can um, you can sort of see the, the sign that's on the south side of the building. There's a, a, a small tree there that's going to grow, and you're not going to be able to see that sign. But when you are traveling south on Route 5, you don't see that building until you've got the Liberty Bank sign, and then you've got some other little signage in the way. You've got a pole, and then a, another couple of trees that block that, that, that north side of the building. There's no sign on that side of the building. It's hard to see the building itself. You don't even know that you're there until you really get to driveway. And so we really feel the need that to have this, this pylon sign. Um, it's much smaller than what was there before. It's smaller than what is allowed or, or would be allowed. Um, and so permission to approve. OK, so it's going to go on a pylon. And I saw the design here. It's going to be in the front, and it's going to be set back from the road. Yeah. Yeah, while looking at this. Oh, okay. I do have some photos that I took if you want to see traveling. Um, the setback is 10 feet. Yeah. 10 feet from the front property line right. and 10 foot from the, the drive. Which is even further back from the roadway because of the property line is back from the roadway. So, okay. Does anybody got any questions? The, the razor signs that are there would be removed? Well, would they stay if you get this sign? You're talking about the flags that are yes. on? Yes, they would be removed. What's that? Anybody else? I'd like, uh, I have to agree with your comments on uh, going uh, 
seven uh, south. south north. Oh, yeah. north, yeah. North on five. Yeah. And I experienced the same situation. I got past your place and I was looking for your place and I said, where the heck is it? And uh, I had to turn around and go back again. So well said. Thank you. Is there anybody here to speak in favor of this application? Anybody here to speak against it? Hearing, seeing none. <coughs> I'll close. Oh, do you have anything for us like cool. that? I do not. Okay. Yes. Close the public hearing. Open up the discussion and possible mm -hmm. action by the board. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve a variance request for a sign area of 73.96 feet, where 654 square feet max is permitted to erect a 24.94 square foot sign at 905 North County Road, as shown on site plan sheet 2, 7 <coughs> Brew Coffee, dated 4124, revised date 82624, and submitted plans received 912. 2024. So moved. Second. Motion to approve, Mr. Conroy. Yes, to approve. Mr. Wolfer. Yes, to approve. Ms. Raditz. Uh, yes, to approve. Mr. Rice. Yes, to approve. And, and Chairman Russell. Yes. Good luck. Thank you. Next uh, variance request is 24 030. Variance request for Chick fil A. Yes, we do, Mr. Chairman. We have staff comments that read as follows. Applicant requests variance approval for side yard of 6.5 feet where 20 feet is required and 16.8 feet exists to expand a canopy of approximately 850 square feet over a proposed second drive-through pickup lane at 1098 North Colony Road in an RU-40 district. Additional Planning and Zoning Commission application slash approval for site plan modification will follow ZBA determination to address the addition of the actual second drive-through aisle. Side yard variance request is necessary only for the erection of the additional canopy. The parcel is unique as it is surrounded on three sides and incorporated within a cluster of commercial properties that include retail, restaurant, and associated parking, with the interior shared access ways to each. Side yard variance requested affects the boundary with neighboring restaurant sites, parking spaces, and landscaped parking buffer and does not impede any parking, access, or circulation for this or any abutting property. Thank you. <coughs> Welcome. Please state your name and address mm -hmm. for the record. Uh, Amy Kitchens, an attorney with offices at 135 Broad Street, um, also a Wyoming resident. Um, here representing Chick-fil-A, I'll let both of my colleagues um, introduce themselves when they get to their um, point. but. Uh, as we just noted from the staff report we're here tonight uh, in connection with the sign yeah, yeah. variance request, um, this is part of Chick-fil-A's proposal to make a full, full dual queue uh, for order and uh, meal pickup. We have to get closer to the oh. microphone. They can barely hear it. Go ahead. Sorry. No. Is that better? Uh, try it. They'll let me know. Okay. <laughs> um, so it's part of Chick-fil-A's system to update the uh, site, which was built about 10 years ago, uh, to its industry standard. Uh, at the moment with both queues both for ordering and delivery. Um, we did request, or excuse me, uh, in May of 2022, there was a smaller side yard variance request that was made and approved for the canopy that's existing right now. This is, uh, and Chaz will walk you through the details, um, this is a larger canopy that will match correctly what was shown at is and is now existing at the front of the building over the, um, order pickup area. So as we did know in the narrative, um, the request that um, was made in connection with that variance was for 16.8. What was actually built was um, a setback of 17.5 feet, so it was a little, um, a little less than what was actually given in the variance. Um, and as also as noted in the staff report, the uh, hardship associated with this property is obviously it's 
very unique shape, its location within the center, um, and then because of the shape, uh, orientation of the building on the property. Um, as you can, you can see, um, part of the original development has a number of parking spaces that I think everybody knows is the Chick-fil-A lot um, outside the property line um, as part of a shared parking agreement. So with that, I'll turn it over to Chaz to uh, walk you through the details. Thank you, Amy. Uh, as Amy mentioned, Chaz Evans, uh, licensed engineer in Connecticut uh, with Bowler Engineering offices at 65 LaSalle Road in uh, West Hartford. Uh, just want to orient you to where um, the variance is being seeked. Uh, as Amy mentioned at the, uh, the pickup window here, there's an existing uh, canopy that the, the previous variance was received for. Uh, looking to uh, expand this canopy yeah. out. Um, as Chick fil A would like to go with the, the double drive to do basically protect um, not only folks picking up their orders, but also their uh, employees that you know, often stand out in this area, whether it's hot out, whether it's snow. Um, it really protects them to, for them to be able to walk with the iPads. And really, from an operations standpoint. Um, so, again, it's really an expansion of the existing canopy um, that would come within 6.5 feet of this uh, side property line here. Um, the only minor site piece is a change in the curb line, about six to eight inches to accommodate that. Um, but overall, from a characteristic of the site itself, um, it would remain the same. The building remains the same with the exception of the extension uh, of the canopy. Uh, the renderings we provided here, and we'll let uh, my colleague Kenny get into more of the operation side, um, is again the, the pickup window uh, that you drive around the building. The canopy, again, would get extended. Currently, it's, it's over part of the building, and only you know, portion out from the face of the building would get out to cover, cover essentially a lane and a half um, to allow you know one full car and then the driver's side window uh, and some of the next car in the so second. So it's not going to be a full two lane width. It's only going to be like a <laughs> lane and a half. Correct, and that, that's why there's still a 6.5 foot uh, you know, 6.5 foot side yard setback that's not going right up to the property line. Uh, uh, pass over to Gideon and kind of walk you guys through the operations and why, uh, you know, how this plays out. Thanks. Uh, the the manager with Jeremy Gray and LaSalle, JLL, supporting Chick fil A. Could you say your name again, please? A little slower because they're, they want to make sure it got picked up right. Gideon Lee, G I D E O N, O E E, and uh, with JLL, supporting Chick fil A. Uh, we're a development consultant. Chick-fil-A. We're essentially an owner's rep, uh, so we, we do business on behalf of Chick-fil-A. Um, I lead the Northeast Development, or I, I should say Redevelopment Program, where we are coming in voluntarily retrofitting existing Chick-fil-A restaurants uh, with the latest prototype. So if you see a new store break ground, it would lead with a doorway fulfillment, is what it's called. So two lanes all the way around the building, two lanes at the order point, and then two lanes at the pickup. The team members can take orders on iPads at the face to face canopy, which exists today on the site. And then you know, team members can deliver to the second lane um, in the proposed condition for the long term. Uh, so, again, like Chad and Megan have mentioned, the canopies they provide relief and shelter for those team members and guests, uh, whether it's uh, heaters in the, in the winter and fans in the summer. And the main purpose of that <clears throat> one and a half lane coverage canopy that we're pursuing. Um, is so that team members can walk outside uh, what's called a Tormax door. So this elevation needs to be updated. We are installing a door uh, that opens up kind of like an elevator door, uh, but also acts as a, a window. So that, that goes in all our new restaurants. Uh, but we are retrofitting to some restaurants. Uh, so that allows a team member to come outside, deliver to the second lane safely uh, by way of the crosswalk. And then in the middle, between lanes one and two, you'll see a three-foot team member striping zone where they can deliver orders upstream uh, so that cars can bypass you know, the car sitting at the window that might, might have a $70 order, which isn't that uncommon in today's world, uh, and allows the drive through to, to operate more efficiently and to you know, re release, uh, I guess, the queue and flow through the uh, past the pickup window. Uh, yeah, we, we would love to have your support here. So thanks so much. Has anybody gotten Yes, you mentioned the curb is going to be moved. What curb are you talking about? Sure, there's an existing, uh, on 
on the drive through there's an existing curb line uh, right along the edge of the existing drive through um, Again, as Gideon mentioned, to provide the, the adequate spacing for the <coughs> to walk through the curb line that is along the edge of the side property line, which takes down about six to eight inches. Um, You're going to move close. it cl closer to Aztec? Correct. Closer to Aztec. Right. Which is it's a essentially a curb width. So you're going to move, the only reason I'm saying this, you're moving closer to the parking lot where you have extra pedestrians walking. Correct, but we'll still maintain that volume's going to strip between the property line and the parking. And there's just, no intent just, sorry, just a point of order. We're here on the canopy, not on the curb. Mm -hmm. the curb but there's will be part of it. And zoning. That's no, not yeah. part oh, of it. Oh, it's not? No, oh, it's okay. just the canopy. All right, that's, that's it then. Okay. Just didn't want to get sidetracked. Well, he mentioned right. it. I know he I mentioned just, it, but, but it's not part of what we're. Okay. And we can easily get sidetracked, and I just sure. want to keep it in. No problem. It'll, it'll be part of the site plan. It'll be mm -hmm. part of the site plan modification. Assuming we get your approval, we still have to go through the site plan modification process. Mm -hmm. So adding this lane helps with the traffic there. I mean, yes, yeah. That's correct. I just wanted to point out that you have they have several lanes to order, two or three, so and they only have one pickup. So and that's it. Okay. I understand your model. I understand. Perfect. So at the even at the drive through entrance, I believe today it's a single lane coming into the entrance. Uh, but today we're trying to open up that right. road to, to be I know two what you're lanes, doing. although not exactly. Uh, and the operator can choose to taper down to one lane after they order. So there are some efficiencies there. Uh, but, you know, if you want to truly increase this capacity, uh, we're giving them the tools to do that. Uh, to run operational plays as it seems fit. Anybody else? Questions? I just comment, we're the same type of thing we did for Dunkin' Donuts mm -hmm. across from Walmart a bunch of years ago, too. They They're all the doing it. Mm -hmm. So, um, is there anybody here to speak in favor of this application? Anybody here to speak against it? Anything further? Anybody wants to add? Anything further you guys must ask? I've seen it, and I, I've seen it. Uh, I, I'm always amazed. Not to get sidetracked, but always amazed to go by a Chick Fil A. How many people in, are in line? And I mean, it's amazing. Just amazing. It is it's quite amazing a business. How much the sales channels have adapted past COVID from dine-in to now mobile? Yeah, mm -hmm. mobile. Yeah. So I'm gonna close the public hearing up and open up for discussion and possible action. Um, Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> I'll make a motion to approve a variance request for a side yard of 6.5 feet where 20 feet is required to construct. Expand the canopy over portion of proposed second drive through aisle at 1098 North County Road as shown on site plan Chick-fil-A A Wallingford FSR number 3370-1098 at 1100 North County Road dated 9 10 2024 and submitted elevation plans received August 16, 2024. So moved. Second. Motion to approve, Mr. Conrad. Yes, to approve. Mr. Wolfram. Yes, to approve. Ms. Roberts. Yes, to approve. Mr. Rice. Yes, to approve. And Chairman Nelson. Yes, to approve. Good luck. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Please stop by. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate it. Uh, next variance request is 24-032, variance request for uh, Connecticut Food Bank. Two research partners. Madam Secretary, do you have any first question? Yes, Mr. Chairman. We have staff comments that read as follows. Application is for six variance requests. Front yard setback of 50 feet where 100 feet is required and 89 feet exists, building coverage of 25%, where 20% maximum is permitted and 16.6% exists, minimum open space of 40%, where 50% minimum is required and 55.8 exists, minimum open space in natural state of 35%, where 75% natural state open space is required and 56% exists. Loading docks in front yard, where no loading docks in front yard are permitted, and watershed uh, interchange, 50%, 50 feet. Landscaping of required front yard, where 100% of required front yard, 100 feet. 
to be landscaped in order to expand loading dock and construct building additions for cool frozen storage, dry salvage, and staging area at two research parkway in a WI district. Parcel is a prime example of the hardship and limitations land a site may possess. Side is fronted, site is fronted on all four sides by streets, both Town of Wallingford and Connecticut Roads slash thoroughfares. As such, Parcel has four required front yards, no side yards, and no rear yard. Two Research Parkway also has no abutting properties and is in essentially an island. The Watershed Interchange District was created on April 12, 2022 with added protections and requirements for potential impacts to the watershed and water supply. The parcel and its use predated the inception of the WI regulations and therefore the necessity for the WI front landscaping in natural state was not required. This requirement and this particular variance request applies only to the two front yards on Thorpe Avenue and Joseph Carini Drive as these two of the four front yards are affected by the proposed building construction and site alteration. Consequently, the WI zone regulations are of critical importance, so compliance is critical whenever possible and relief requests reduced to the absolute minimum. The board should evaluate the option to at least reduce this particular variance uh, request along with any other requested variance which may be reduced by alternative solutions such as creating green space and natural open space elsewhere on the parcel or even by means as green roofs or the like. The board may always approve a variance for less than the requested amount but never for more. It is not necessary to deny a variance for, for alternate slash reduced quantity but rather approve with the amended determination or condition the approval on any required adjustments or actions with deadlines to complete at a later date. Thank you. Welcome. Please state your name and address for the record. Good evening. My name is Tino Rivero. Um, I'm the Chief Operating Officer for... Yeah, pull the microphone up. Oh, okay. just to make sure I thought I was loud enough. Um, I'm the Chief Operating Officer at Connecticut Food Share. Um, we are at 2 Research Parkway in Wallingford. Okay, explain your... Uh, application. Absolutely. So w if first I would thank you. I know it's getting late. I, I appreciate the fact that you're considering this application for us. I just wanted to cover a few things before I turn it over to our design partners to walk you through the technicalities. Some quick background on myself, which I think is important. Um, so I've been, connect I've been um, in food banking dating back to 2008. I actually sat on the board of directors for, there were two prim primary food banks in state of Connecticut. It was Food Share and Connecticut Food Bank. Um, so I sat on the board of Food Share um, up until the merger in 2005, or 21, excuse me, when Connecticut Food Share and, food, and, and Connecticut Food Bank became one, which I, I said <coughs> Food Share and Connecticut Food Bank combined and became Connecticut Food Bank. I, I sat on the board of directors in the, the new Connecticut Food Bank and I joined the organization. I've been there full time over about a, two years at this point. And the other thing I wanted to talk about is I've spent prior to this 29 years of my background is in supermarket retail. Um, I work for Stop and Shop in operations, including warehouse operations. Um, and the reason I share that is I, I do have, you know, I, I do have some expertise as it relates to the, the warehousing operation side. And I also am fully committed to food banking. I've been involved uh, in food banking, as I said, going back to 2008. I understand how critical it is to the, or to the community. I also understand the responsibility that it entails. Um, I just wanted to walk you through a handful of things. I just want to give you an update on just food insecurity in the state of Connecticut. Talk to you a little bit about who we are and what we do. Talk to you about why Wallingford. Um, talk about future growth that we're looking at, and then the actual proposed expansion and what that would help us do. Mm -hmm. So um, I know. 
As everybody's aware, food insecurity um, across the state of Connecticut um, has been significantly impacted you know, since pre-pandemic pre to post um, with huge inflation. Uh, we've seen food inflation over the three years um, hit the range of about 25 plus percent increases. We've seen double digit um, housing cost increases in the state. We've seen double digit um, healthcare cost increases in the state. And we've seen double digit electricity costs. All I will say, the Wallingford electricity rates are excellent. So that's something I'll talk about later. And the reason I'm sharing this is this has had a significant impact on the, the, the food insecurity in the state. It's required, uh, we're, we're at state, uh, a level of food insecurity that we never anticipated, even post pandemic. Um, to give you a little bit more f um, facts, today in the state of Connecticut, there are 470,000 um, residents that are considered food insecure. That's one in eight residents in the state of Connecticut. Of the one in uh, of that 470,000, there are 112,000 children in the state of Connecticut that are food insecure, which means that's one in six children in the state of Connecticut are food insecure. Another thing to understand about Connecticut is there are 39% of the residents of Connecticut are um, considered basically um, struggling to meet the basic needs. So what I would refer to as covering the basic cost of living. Um, and to put this in a, into a, a little bit more um, frame that would probably resonate, uh, a family of four in the state of Connecticut, that's two adults and two children, in order to meet what's considered subsistence living, covering the cost of living and having access to, um, to nutritious food, need to earn at least $114,000 a year. And when you hear that number, it's pretty staggering, right? You think, and I know when I first came out, if I had a $114,000 job, I would have been, um, I would have been extremely happy. Um, so it's, it's a significant impact on the state. Um, we are uh, a nonprofit. We are part of a um, national organization of food banks called Feeding America. Um, we have 125 associates who work for us at Connecticut Food Bank, of which a large portion of those do frequent uh, businesses in the town of Wallingford, and I'm one of them. I was at Reba's this afternoon getting tacos. Um, to give you a, a sense of, again, what we do, last year um, we supplied enough food to support 44 million meals across the state of Connecticut. We work with 650 um, partner agencies. These are uh, hunger-based organizations, including food banks, feeding organizations, as well as our own mobile pantries that we have throughout the state. Um, one of the things that's happened over the last several years is we've brought a great deal of awareness to food insecurity in the state. Um, we've garnered a lot of public support to help get behind the food insecurity issue. We've actually garnered a lot of political support and we've garnered a lot of media support and a large portion of that has actually taken place in our Wallingford location. Um, I mentioned the food, the, uh, the mobile food pantries. We support 25 plus thousand families every month across 120 uh, mobile food pantries um, that are located across the entire state. And when I say mobile food pantry, if you think about like a Coke or a Pepsi truck that pulls up to a convenience store that with the side loader doors, that's what we that's what we send out to uh, to these different locations. Um, what I wanted to do is also connect it back for you for the town of Wallingford itself. Um, we supplied enough food um, this past year to support almost 800,000 meals in the town of Wallingford, working through the, part, the five uh, partner agencies that are in the town along with a couple food pantries. To give you a sense, Wallingford itself, which is a little bit better than the state of Connecticut, but Wallingford has just under 12% food insecurity rate. So that means that there's over 5,000 people in Wallingford alone who are food insecure. Um, I'm going to step into the why Wallingford. Um, back when we merged in, in 2021, um, you know, some of the things that went into that decision in moving the core operation to Wallingford, um, because we have three locations today. We have a, a satellite location in Bloomfield, we have a small location in Bridgeport, and then we have Wallingford. Um, we have great relationship with the town. Uh, we always have. They've been very supportive of our mission in, in fighting food insecurity. The, uh, we have a good, uh, good volunteer base in Wallingford, and I'll speak to a little bit about volunteers in a minute, and it's growing. Um, we have good agency relationships in the town. 
Um, the location itself is, is probably goes without saying it's ideal. Um, we're central, we're, we're 60 seconds from 91 and we're 15 to 20 minutes um, from the major highways. I already talked about the uh, electricity rates are very favorable. Um, the core facility itself is in excellent shape. Um, and at the time of the merger, um, obviously the, you know, the zoning regulations were different. When we first merged, um, based on you know, the forecasted food and security rates, we felt that, that the facility itself had enough capacity for us to continue to grow. Um, the expectation was post-pandemic that the food and security rates would drop, and they did, but nowhere close to where we anticipated and to the fact that they're almost at levels that they were during the pandemic, which is obviously you know, driven why we're here today and requesting additional space. Um, another, uh, a little bit of feedback. Today, we do reach capacity at certain times of the year in our cooler where we store all our fresh product in our freezer. Um, and we are forecasted based on current growth rates. Um, we're, we're likely going to hit capacity in the next two years. The proposed expansion itself, um, we uh, obviously we worked uh, um, on multiple iterations of what we were presenting to you today, uh, working with our STV partners, you know, presenting to both Mary and to Kevin. Um, the uh, the space that what we're presenting today, I will tell you, we did make modifications to the final version. Um, and as we were, we were putting this together, we were trying to be mindful of the new regulations. The modifications that we made are to our sortation area, which is where we sort all of the donated product that comes into the building, as well as our dry, um, refrigerated, and frozen areas. And the reason I say we made modifications, um, what we're presenting isn't the ideal operationally, but it's what we felt we could maximize um, the space that we're presenting today. What we are presenting is what we believe is, you know, this is the minimum space that we need um, to be able to continue to grow. What the expansion will do for us clearly is it will give us the ability to continue to support the amount of volume that comes through, um, you know, Wallingford. It'll help us, and, and the one thing I didn't share with you, which I'm, I am going to backtrack a little bit, um, to give you a sense of the uh, Wallingford operation itself today. We um, select and deliver, so we select 38,000 cases per week and deliver between 850 and 900,000 pounds of food. On an annual basis, um, we select just under 2 million cases of product and deliver over 40 million pounds of food um, annually across the state. So back to the actual expansion and how it will help us. Um, again, obviously, it will help us continue to support the unfortunate growth that we're seeing in food insecurity. Operationally, it will make the warehouse more, more efficient, more effective, and it will make it, it safer. It will relieve some of the congestion that we're experiencing today. It will absolutely improve our cost structure. Um, we, we, our, our desire is ultimately to be able to close the, um, the Bloomfield facility and, and consolidate the rest of the operation. And when I say it'll improve our cost structure, obviously as a nonprofit, um, it's hugely important for us to continue to reduce costs. Unlike my prior life in the, in the for-profit, every penny of expense that we reduce here, it, goes, it, it doesn't go to a bottom line. It gets reinvested back into programs that support the agencies that ultimately support our neighbors in need. Um, a couple other benefits for us is it, it, will, it will get our entire team in, you know, in basically the majority of our team in one location. And it does have the potential to bring additional jobs to Wallingford as we continue to grow in size because we will ultimately need more selectors and more drivers. And um, so I, I just I wanted to give you a little bit of that background as to why we're, we're asking for what we're asking today. If there aren't any questions, I'm going to turn it over to our, our uh, partners at STV and to walk you through the technical asks of the, uh, of the uh, request. I have, a, I have a question. Sure. Um, with this growing food insecurity, mm -hmm. even with these proposed um, expansions, will you mm -hmm. soon outgrow yes. this facility? Yes, it's, it's a great question. So based on it, and obviously our, our desire is that at some point those food insecurity rates start to come down, but based on our current growth rate, you know, this should take us out at least 12 to 15 years at least 
Um, Even with consolidating the state of yes, the yes, it's part of this is all part of what we're what we maybe and let me let me explain too when I say consolidate, all of the where all of the actual product selection mm -hmm. happens in Wallingford. So we don't do any of that okay. in the other two facilities. We use the other facility to actually just cross dock. Let me back up a second. So um, every every so agencies go online. They actually put orders in on a weekly basis, just mm -hmm. like like in a retail store would order. Mm -hmm. Our warehouse team selects those orders at Wallingford. We ship though that we then put those orders on a truck, and we either ship directly to the agencies across the state, or we do we cross dock. And what I mean by cross dock is we'll bring orders um, from Wallingford up to our Bloomfield location mm -hmm. because we have because we have agencies who will pick up there. Yep. And then we do the same in Bridgeport. We'll mm -hmm. bring orders down to Bridgeport mm -hmm. that the agencies will come. And we also have some agencies that pick up in Wallingford. But all of the physical work itself is done in Wallingford. So those are really, you know, those are really just, just as I said, those are kind of, um, and that's why it's not efficient for us. It, it is, we do all the work here. And, and when, we, when we first um, consolidated, that was part of the discussion was ultimately being solely in in uh, in Wallingford. So, how much more traffic might be um, realized in Wallingford here if you close Bloomfield and then yeah, agencies not, are coming here? Yeah. Um, so the only thing you may see is a little bit more from the agency side picking up. We're still the same amount of trucks will go out of the building delivering the same product. Yeah. So the only other thing you will see is um, maybe some volunteer increase. You know where they're coming on the property and yep. in okay. uh, in parking. So you think this will be sufficient for the next twelve to fifteen years? Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Um, and our 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 hope is it's actually better than that because the you know, the, the the food the forecasted growth rates are fairly high right now, and that's they weren't that high when we originally looked at. So our obviously our desire is that those will actually improve over time and that 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 runway gets even longer okay thank you you answered my question great never see us never see us what please good, state your name and address for the record good evening my name is angela cahill i'm an employee of stv we are located at 280 trumbull street in hartford uh, thank you board members for indulging us with our comprehensive presentation um, earlier this year, STV was uh, retained as a consultant to evaluate the programmatic needs for food share to enable their critical operations and determine the space needs at Two Research Parkway. STV is a team of architects, engineers, transportation planners, construction management professionals, um, and project managers. Uh, we have a particular interest in supporting communities, so our mission aligns with that of our client, food share. I am a licensed architect with nearly 30 years experience. Our team analyzed food shares needs along with a, another operational consultant that they retained at this facility and um, we looked at their operational space, their vehicular equipment space, and their dry, cold, and frozen storage space. The programmatic analysis concluded um, with a distinct understanding of what was the absolute baseline critical needs and that focused on the storage component. Upon initial, our initial review of the zoning regulations, we were pleased to find that the desired expansion would be close to or just beyond their, what we thought was their zone, the uh, IX zone. But after our initial conversation with, with staff, we were made aware that the zone had been changed to the water inter interchange zone in 2022. As such, we reviewed many layout options with Mr. Rivero and his team. Um, and those layout options were looked at it from two standpoints. What was the ideal solution for their operational efficiency and ma maximizing their storage capacity? And also what would work best on the constraints of the site here in town, given the new restrictions? The solution that we have submitted to you, we believe meets their minimum needs, yet respects the new zone's requirements as much as possible. FoodShare's goal was to be respectful of the code and the usage of the land, while not having a layout or expansion size that would make their, make their potential expansion infeasible. They've made concessions, as Mr. Rivero has mentioned, in the layout because their intent was to be as close to the zoning could as we possibly can. 
As the staff report mentions, the overarching uh, hardship is the change of zone to an existing property owner with four sides being front yards. This is a prime example, as the report mentions, of hardship. Um, and this hardship will fall directly on, the on their uh, potential growth and their mission of serving the hungry. Once we identified the increased storage need, we worked with the town staff to understand how this major hardship would trickle down into the exact zoning uh, variance needs. Um, so first and foremost, the property is surrounded by streets, so as each side is considered a front yard having the deepest yard requirements, uh, the two we are concerned with most is the, on the north side, Carini, uh, which is on the left of the board, and on the west at the bottom of the board on Thorpe. There are no abutters. Those are the two sides we are asking for relief um, to become 50 yards, which are essentially side yards in the WI district rather than 100 yards. Just so you know, the opposite side of those roads, the current tenants or owners of the property are Sensor Works and Pearson. Sensor Works on Thor across Thorpe and Pier no Pearson across Thorpe and Sensor Works across Carini. Uh, the variance request includes the ability to use these fronts for loading as they do now, and as such, the related equipment, the re related requirement for landscaping. As in any light and industrial storage occupancy, four front yards would be a hindrance to that usage. <clears throat> we are also not able to meet the co coverage and open space requirements. Where the coverage and open space requirements are 20% and 50% respectively, we are asking for 25% and 40% respectively, which would be a 5% and 10% respective change. Um, due to the nature of storage and light industrial use, the expansion unfortunately is only possible on the ground floor because their programmatic needs are tied to both exterior and interior vehicular operations, trucks and forklifts, and the programmatic expansion is tied to the location of the types of storage, dry, cold and frozen. Therefore, an upper level expansion was not possible. Several of our options were ideal in layout for their operations. Uh, but resulted in building addition lines that were far greater infringing on your zones, on your yard sizes rather. Therefore, as Tino mentioned, we made adjustments and reconfigurations to lessen the impact as much as possible on your new regulations. We feel that the ask of the additional 5 and 10% changes to the coverage and open space is reasonable given to the nature of the typical light industrial and storage use with no neighbors. We also understand the reason for the zone change to WI was, as mentioned in the report, to mitigate any potential water quality issues. If you've been to the site, you notice that the property is very well designed and maintained. At the time it was built, only nine years ago, the design res was respectful, respectful of the contemporary zoning re requirements. Not only were plantings and parking area islands and vegetated peninsulas included, but storm detention was included as well. Thinking of how else the property is respectful to the environment, it was built under 2015 building codes, which require a high level of energy efficiency, which includes tight and insulated envelope construction and other types of resource conservation. From an occupancy standpoint, food share is not only light on the power grid requirements, but they have a significantly small water usage and discharge. So in comparison to buildings built decades ago, this parcel is a complete success in terms of low impact on the environment, and hopefully that can be considered in exchange for our client's variance request. While we respect the suggestion of the staff report of adding green groups or additional green space, that would, and that would create a burden on our client's ability to um, conduct this addition in a um, conservative financial way and therefore impact on the food insecurity that they serve. <clears throat> Not only are green roofs expensive, for example, to design and build, um, they might include significant structural support, um, they would need to be maintained, we would need to provide access to the roof areas to provide that maintenance, um, and this building was built with pitched roofs and also very light structure in order to have wide open framing bays to accommodate the storage needs. Furthermore, roof areas in the building, um, because of their slope nature, would not be able to accommodate the green roof structure as currently configured. So we thank you for your time and allow any questions. Mm -hmm.
Thank you. Um, kind of wish it had a better than just this. It's kind of hard to mm. look at this and try and decipher where we are 50 feet, where we're less than four, where, where everything is. Um, and especially with everything you're asking for, having one page to look at doesn't help the application in my eyes. But anyways, let's start. Explain on your, so we can understand, um, on the front yard setback, where, where on this where we're going to be down to 50 feet. So um, the tightest example is here on this side on Carini, and the tightest example on Thorpe would be here. Okay, so what is, what is, what is that you're expanding there? What part of the building? I mean, is there any way that this could be moved around and made so it, it's, because the requirement's 100 feet. Correct. So as we mentioned, we looked at several configurations. The cold and frozen storage is located on this side, and the units come in certain um, modular configurations. We did shift them around as much as possible. Initially, we were coming much closer to the roadway, and we did the best we could in reconfiguring all of that in order to get it uh, as tight as, as possible to the building. And the other, yeah, and you're able to speak to it as well. So that is the side expand the cooler and freezer and at the same time you heard me mention our circation area which is where we um, and in order to uh, it, and at the same time we cannot go back we can't move towards um, Karini, is it Karini? so I mean, I'll walk up here probably makes more sense so our, this is where our, our freezer and cooler space are so this is where we needed to expand the space and in order to do that, as we ultimately modified the configuration, which originally overlapped, our challenge is we can't go this way because we have our receiving our trucks here. So we, if we expand the building out any further than it is, um, then we run into the issues with trucks backing up to loading docks and, and physically pulling in. So that's why um, we created the expansion the way it is on this side of the property. And then that's side. Oh, I'm sorry. And then the north side. So this is our, this is the receiving and shipping end of the building. And we also have a, a garage space today. Um, our challenge, the reason we want to move this way is we are, um, we are constrained for space on the dry warehouse side. And this is where we can pick up that additional space. Um, and I, I'll tell you operationally, so one is the, the ability to move racking, but the second is also to have additional space um, to be able to stage orders. If you were to walk in our facility today, you will see um, where our receiving, where our racking is during the course of the day as we select orders that it literally, so think about this as a warehouse rack, the, the pallets get dropped, get dropped, get dropped. Um, and then it's very tight in, in the ability to maneuver around the building. And it also creates um, congestion when we have inbound loads coming in on that end of the building. So we're trying to move, we're asking to move the building that way so one, we can gain more dry storage space. And the other thing we have is we have a garage that was built in the original um, warehouse and it's one it's a it's a maintenance garage but it too it's also used for our mobile food truck loading in, in inclement weather today the mobile food uh, uh, truck loading happens here and what happens in the morning is we have we have the agencies coming to pick up we have mobile the mobiles being loaded and then at points in time we also have the volunteers who are coming in so this space becomes very congested, congested, and our desire is also trying to get additional garage space so that we can actually pull the mobile loading into the garage, you know, year round. So that way we reduce the congestion here. So in short, this is really to get a, the primary reason is to get us additional warehousing, dry warehousing space here. And then, as I said, it's also to try to get us more garage space so that we can pull the mobile trucks in there. Where are the loading docks now? So the loading docks are no. here. Okay. And then where are the additional ones going now? So as we, as we, so as you see the expanded space, 
Um, right. It would be adjacent to, and these, are, and when we we have them in here, this is providing space should we need additional mm -hmm. docks. But they would be adjacent to the to the existing docks. Yeah. Okay, because it so says here east and west sides. Yes, so that would I'm be sorry. The yes, east side and yes, the and then the, and the same thing on the on the on the back side of the building. And Kyle, if you, so, yeah. How are they going to get around now? Yeah. I mean, how are they going to get around? There's a driveway there. Well, there's there's a drawing where it says dry salvage on there. You have one coming in so from look at the, this. This is right the north end of the property. So I'm going to expand this building here. Um, it, if you see where you have freezers coming across this whole space, essentially that loading dock is key because it's the only way for them to get the items that are going through the dry salvage hallway to where they're doing all the sanitation. Oh, sorry, that's the, yeah. Oh, <laughs> Um, so short of going through the entirety of the rest of the facility um, or their, you know, um, parking area essentially for all of the right. staff, it needs to come to this loading dock in order for them to have access to where they do all right. the dissertation right. before it then moves through the rest of the warehouse to be, you know, palletized and stored and brought to the freezers. How do you get to the back loading docks once you put that building in? Uh, how do you, you can, you come off of uh, Corp Ave, you swing around the back of so the property. So there will be no drive around. There's right now. There's a driveway that goes around. Yes. You're going to cover that with a building. Well, that the building would the come new here. building. Yes. Yes. It's going and, to go over would... the existing driveway that goes around. That's correct. The so, intent is that so that there will be no driving around the building. You have to, no, load, there will. You have to load and unload from both yeah. sides. So the, you're going to or will. you're going to move the driveway into the open space. Correct. That's Part correct. Of the site development will be expanding the driveway just. Within that same footprint, to kind of go around the building with the minimum swing we'll need just for the semi trucks to be able to pull around. Um, so when you're pulling off research to the right there, that's how you go around the building. Now there's loading docks there. Correct. They're staying. Yes. And then as you go around the building, there's additional loading docks. On the back yes. side. Right behind it. Right, exactly. So right in between right behind those two it. new buildings. And you're going to add how many loading? Where are you going to add the loading docks and how many? So the, we have the potential space. Of, the, the potential space we have is to accommodate two additional loading docks, right, um, on each side. We may not need that, right? Two the, on each, so that's four. Yes, in, at maximum, right? But the, the desire is we, we're using that space to expand dry and staging, and we simply have additional space should we need to add a loading dock. And those loading docks, show me on the map what those loading docks would be. Are they on the Thorpe side or are they on research side? They're on research today. We have, right, yeah, I understand. They're, so they're there now. Adjacent, they would literally be right next to the existing docks that we have. On research. On research. On the ones behind the building. So they'll, um, be, so they'll be fronting the main road. Yeah, I'm trying to, sorry, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm pausing to, to recall on the back side. Correct. So the, the layout is almost mirrored where you have um, essentially on this um, eastern edge, you have loading dock, loading dock, loading dock just before that blue area. On the western end, you have them almost mirrored on the far side of the building as well. I was, the I, being, uh, that's just so you know, I'm looking at, when I'm looking at yeah. my phone, I'm look, I was on your property and sure. I looked and I took yeah. pictures, mm -hmm. so I have actual, so that's why I'm looking at the thing as you're talking, I'm mirroring yeah. what you're doing there. So, and just the other thing to call out, so we have two different types of trucks that come on the property. We have box trucks, which are essentially um, the smaller vehicles. Those are the ones that actually that access the front side on Thorpe Ave. All of the trailer that come in, so mm -hmm. these are the 22 pallet, 18 pallet so trucks, they all come around the back. back. Yeah. They, they come off the, the back and side of the property and they get received habitat. Yes. So it's pretty wooden. The green area that you have there, that's landscape, correct? No, it's gonna it's gonna be driveway. Well, I know. I, I was getting to that. The okay, sorry. Yeah, that, thank you. That's where I'm going. <laughs> that's where I'm going. You're, you're you're in the is natural yeah. open space. So okay, that's where's the landscape area? Right I, and so if we if we approved everything you want here, right? And I know you're gonna have to go in front of planning yeah. and zoning for this. So it's I know it's but if we approve everything, then like in this design, which like again, I can't believe you guys for everything you're asking brought this. Right, we have people putting addition on their home that gives us four pages with all kinds of dimensions and everything. I just really to try to understand this, but you know we're we're trying to figure out. All right, we approve this, you know, and you got the greenery here. Where's the roadway going to go? 
So where that is outlining is where you have natural open space right now to get to essentially where that requirement is. Um, the roadway itself would just expand out past yeah, where the existing building is. The reality is we didn't want to take too many shots at designing specifically where that roadway would land without a site consultant on board to kind of define that space. Um, it's kind of a chicken and the egg situation where we can't bring on the cost and everything that would be associated with that until we know that some form of variance is going to be tenable at this property. Um, we didn't want to get, you know, six months into design on some of these items and find out that, um, you know, this wasn't an option for us. So we're trying to be cautious of the costs here, knowing that uh, any dollar is incredibly valuable but when you share. coming in front of a board trying to get, again, as much as you guys are asking for, and then you hand us this, I just, I mean, it's hard. I know everybody here is really struggling with trying to figure out where we are and where everything goes trying to look at this it, you know to me it almost looks like have you called across the street to get make a deal on Bristol Myers property <laughs> you can build the <laughs> building you want yeah, this, uh, is much, that, that, this is much more cost effective yeah. for us um, and my understanding of so back to the, the original question around the, the actual tarmac it would move out there would be literally almost no green space once you put a driveway in. Uh, no, that's because yeah. you don't have you don't you, you you don't represent the driveway in that drawing, the new driveway. Yeah, that new the old one is, is there, that, right? It's in the green, yes. right? To be clear, that's not all of the green space on the site either. That is just the undisturbed. Nope, I understand that. Okay. Yes, I understand that. The rest is all lawn. I got a good picture yeah, of it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> there pictures. It looks like there's. Yes, the driveway is not in our, ours. Part of partially. Secondly, if you granted a variance for what they're asking, and they go to planning and zoning and need otherwise, then the variance was they'll be back. It, so if, you know, look at it as limiting to the building coverage, which you're used to, certainly because of the, the needs to go single level or to expand. You know, horizontally, instead of vertically. Um, the, the front yards are significant. I mean, we speak of corner yards all the time for folks that have two front yards. This is four. So the building envelope is significantly reduced in and of itself. And of that, the requirements of this zone require the, the required front yard in its entirety to make, remain the landscaped. We can have drive aisles, as we've done in the past, can cut through landscaping. It's when you can move them for like a parking lot or or such, but they can they can actually disturb a portion of it. But again, if they propose something other than what you approved, and planning and zoning says, wait a minute, that parking lot expanded, it doesn't account for for the request then the variance doesn't, is well, not about yeah. How many feet, if they, if one side was front yard, if you say they're in, in a different area down the road, what are the side yard requirements? 50 feet. Are, and, but you're still going within the 50 feet in some areas. So that, well, that they're limited to the 100 feet. I understand, of, but they're still. On four sides. So again, you're I understand using that. your building envelope. Then you have an open space requirement which it, again kind of falls in line with the building coverage and the maximum building coverage and the percentage of the lot that's just available to be open. And then this new requirement, which was suggested by the town planner, food for thought, is such as green roof, even if it's to entertain down the road, we may look at some alternatives. But again, that's for planning and zoning to say, we've got the variance we want you to provide it elsewhere on the site. That is not and these are all coolers, right? Uh, the, the, the back side? It's yeah. Like, it's the coolers and freezers. So it's all right. It's all, they're, they're all, they're all, I know, I built them. Yeah, refrigerated. So I know. Refrigerated I, I build stuff in shops, I know. Oh, did you? I do. Right. I do for 25 oh, years, yeah. I know who you are. Who do you work for? Work for Brownstone. Oh, Bob Furs. Yeah, for Bob Furs. I don't know if I clarify before you go. I'm good. Yep. Okay. Go ahead, Karen. I have a question. Um, so it says variance request for a front yard of 50 feet, where 100 feet is required. 
This has four front yards. Correct. So are we asking for a variance request for each of the four it front yards? It's impacted just like you do on anything else. If we put an addition on a house and it's encroaching on the side yard, we're only looking at that, not what exists. So where those building additions are, are the impacted areas. So two. They can't make them fix what was not required mm -hmm. in the past on the other sides. Because there's other or sides are already within the 50 they, feet. Right. Okay. Well, and even if they are not, because the okay. regulations changed their right, grandfather, but, they're not impacted. Right, but they're already there. So it's those two sides, those two front yards, and then, of course, building coverage is the entirety, the right. site in its entirety, yep. and as is the open space. Did building coverage change under this zoning regulation? I don't, yes. so, yeah, not, not quite sure, but we, we, this is, I've already addressed many of these things anticipating some of these questions with the applicant prior, trying to flesh it out, they'll be nice and clear. It is confusing. The new regulations are specific and planning and zoning might hold them to a different standard later. Again, giving alternatives because that is, it is new, it is important, and that's the thing that they would stick on, if you will, of more than anything, more than a building coverage, would be the natural state, the environmental issues. Mm -hmm. Um, but that is not for us to offer mm -hmm. alternatives again. So, all right, I'm good. They, uh, mm -hmm. it, it, they're trying to demonstrate. Uh, I had a hard time myself um, through a few iterations, but the impacted area and the impacts on that, on setbacks and such, and the percentage of landscaping only pertain to this, the northern side and the. Mm -hmm. Um, so, yeah, so when you're talking natural state, what is your the amount of land that you're going to have in natural state? Because behind the building on the west side has some natural state on it, and you're going to be disturbing that area? Correct. We would need to minimally just to get around um, what we need for the swing on the paving area on the northern side of the building, just around where those two garages are. So northern, you're not going to touch the western side where there's uh, trees and it looks like some water? Uh, this is the western side down yeah, by here. Right it, here. Yeah, we will impact um, roughly oh, about okay. 10 feet of that just on the pinch point where we are right by the corner of the building. The square footage there is minimal, but it does intersect. Yeah, so... So two things. So we will impact some of this green space here as we expand the building out just to accommodate the, the drive around. Matter of fact, I was talking to the, the fire marshal earlier today that called regarding the access around the property. So this some of this would be impacted and probably here to about here based on the building. Because that's all mature land and yeah. that's the percentage. Yeah. And so, so what? It's a percentage of the lot as right. opposed so, to. So, what percentage are you going to go down to? So, we're proposing to go down to within the 75% um, of the existing open space, which still um, be there. And then um, we're proposing going from 50% down to 40% of the space on site being open space. And the total coverage of the property is going to be. So, square, oh, go ahead. 25% instead of 20. So you're covering more than the minimum requirements, or maximum requirements. You're going above it. And did that change? Then, did, did that That's what their request is. Yeah. Yes, it, yes, no, it but changed. it changed under the zoning. Oh, I, uh, yeah. I, unfortunately, I don't have my old IX bulk standards. But, but it is something, and it changed for a reason. I understand the reasons why they changed it up there because of the watershed area up there. So it was changed because of the watershed, yeah, and you're having trucks coming. Yeah, protections for the watershed. I'm done that right now. I'm hearing additional <laughs> questions. I, I have all. I, I'm just no, concerned fine. because it's natural habitat up there. I saw some ponds up on the property up there, retention pond, it looks like, and so forth. So there must be an issue with water or something in that area. Uh, so they actually have to. No, they actually they, have, they to have to. Yeah. 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 But there's yeah. looks like some potential water behind the building too oh, yeah. on the west side. Right. I didn't get out and walk it, but yeah. So correct. On the, fourth on the opposite fourth side path. there's tree ponds, I believe. Yeah, the yeah. 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 So the, re the, the major retention ponds are on the side. Yeah, not, not that's not what we're dealing with. We're not I'm talking on the west side. 
where you're coming around with the ha natural habitat and so forth. Anybody else got any further yeah. questions on this? So you'll have loading docks on three sides of the building. Uh, no, two sides. Two sides. Two sides. Two sides. Nothing's yeah. going to happen on the the right. Nothing's going to happen on the north side. Uh, Parking lot. Side. Side. No. So the garages that are on the far north side of that building are pull through. So even though it's on that far side of the building, um, you know, it's the yes, entrance sir. is going to be either on the east or the west side. No one's coming directly yes, off of our back question. side. There are no loading docks adjacent to the back to the west end of the building. You just park trucks back there. Yeah, yes, we park trucks. So the garage, oh, that expansion that you see here, yeah. um, which is, I'll use this. Sorry. So that, that garage expansion would come out. The receiving docks would remain on this side and on the back side. So there would be nothing on because there's trucks there, and I, I just want to say what you guys, what yeah. you do, is fabulous, and I understand the whole. And this is nothing; it's just yeah, I, zone. I, 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 I want you to understand because what you guys do is a, a absolute, you know, it's wonderful. I mean, you make sure people are fed, and, and it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the regulations. Understood. Take you out of the picture, yeah. put anybody else in your seat. Same questions would be asked. Yeah. Okay, I just want to. Okay, clear. I'm not trying to give anybody a hard time. I think that, I mean, it, that's very true. You guys do do a, 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 you know, amazing job in what you do for the community. It's outstanding. Well, for it's just, state. you know, coming in front of us and asking all this and us trying to decipher quite a bit. Anybody else got any more questions? Is there anybody here to speak in favor of this application? Anybody here to speak against it? Hearing, seeing none. Do you have anything further? You'd like to add. Okay. I'm going to close the public hearing, open up the discussion, and possible action by the clerk. Okay, let's start with the first variance. No, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> variance request for a front yard of 50 feet or 100 feet is required to construct loading docks and building additions. At two research parkways as shown on site proposal, Connecticut Food Bank Incorporated submitted September 16, 2024. So moved. Second. This is for a front yard setback, Mr. Conway. Yes, to approve. Mr. Wolfer. Yes, to approve. Ms. Roberts. Uh, yes, to approve. Yes to approve. Yes. Make motion to approve a variance request for building coverage of 25% where 20% max is permitted to construct loading docks and building additions at two research parkway as shown on site proposal. Connecticut Food Bank Incorporated submitted September 16th, 2024. So move. Second. Yes to approve. Mr. Yes to approve. Yes to approve. Mr. Rice. Uh, yes to approve. Mr. Rice. Yes. Motion for a variance request of minimum open space of 40% where minimum 50% is required to construct loading docks and building additions at two research parkway as shown on site plan proposal. Connecticut Food Bank Incorporated submitted September 16, 2024. So moved. Second. This is a motion to approve the minimum open space, Mr. Conrad. Yes, to approve. Mr. Wolfman. Yes, to approve. Ms. Rice. Uh, yes, to approve. Mr. Rice. Yes to approve. Yes. Variance request for a minimum open space in natural state of 35% or minimum 75%. Open space in natural state is required to construct loading docks and building additions at two research parkway as shown on site. Plan proposal, Connecticut Food Bank Incorporated, submitted September 16, 2024. So moved. Second. Okay, motion to approve this one as minimum 
open space in this natural state? Yes, to approve it. Mr. Wolfer. Yes, to approve. Mm -hmm. Yes, to approve. Mr. Rice. Yes, to approve. And Jeremy yes. Make a motion for variance request for loading docks in front yard where no loading docks in front yard permitted to construct loading docks and building additions at two research parkway as shown on site plan proposal. Connecticut Food Bank Incorporated submitted September 16, 2024. So moved. Second. Yes, to approve. Mr. Wolf. Yes, to approve. <clears throat> yes, to approve. Yes, to approve. Yes. <laughs> Make a motion for variance request in a WI zone front yard landscaping of 50%, 50 feet where WI zone landscaping requires 100%, 100 feet. Front yard to be landscaped to construct loading docks and building additions at Two Research Parkway as shown on site proposal, Connecticut Food Bank Incorporated, submitted September 16, 2022, at 24. So moved. Second. Yes to approve. Yes to approve. Yes to approve. Yes to approve. Yes. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. That was Good luck. Appreciate it. Yeah. Keep up the good Thank work. You. Okay. Oh. Good luck. Thank you very much. Yeah. Good luck. Can I get a I motion know. to accept the minutes as written, or Tom, do you have any corrections? <laughs> No, no corrections, but I do have to say that I, uh, when we come across uh, Karen's uh, name, I usually stop and think, who is this person? <laughs> but other than that, uh, we'll get used to it. I sometimes have the same question. <laughs> who, is, who is this person? So I make a motion to approve the uh, minutes as, as submitted. All in favor. Aye. Aye. I'll second. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. All Aye. in favor? Aye. 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 And our one receipt will become a